If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today we're going to be showing off some premium Jewel Knights. Jewel Knights had shown a lot of, I uh, guess you could say, representation in the Spring Fest for both V and premium formats. I kind of want to go over my premium Jewel Knight deck just to kind of show you guys why the deck had such like a high consistency in player use and why the deck's just honestly really fun to play with. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Starting off with our starter, which is Glime. Glime is just like all the other V-series starters. It lets you draw a card, gives you a quick shield if you're going second, and even my, my Glime is shiny and I like my, my shiny Glime. So that's why we're starting with that. Going into our grade threes, we're running four copies of our Ace which is our basically like our kill card. Uh, leading Jewel Knight Salome. For Counter Blast, you can call uh, Jewel Knights to Occupied Circles, and if you call three or more Jewel Knights, you can Soul Blast four to restand. So that's the skill that you're gonna copy with Crystal Luster, so you can restand your G unit and also call a board. And then the second skill is when a unit's placed on top of this, you can Counter Blast one and give that unit 10K to drive. And because G units are units, and they are being placed onto the Vanguard Circle during the stride step, you can counter blast to get Crystal Luster an extra drive. So it's just a really, really good overall main grade three to ride. Next up for grade threes for our normal units, we're running four of Ashley. Ashley is our attacking extender. So it's when it attacks, if it's on Van, you soul blast two, you can search for two grade two or less Jewel Knights. If it's on the Railroad Circle, you just choose search up for one, but even searching for one unit is still a really good extending attacker. That's the main reason we're using it. It has the ability to give a unit a crit if something's called on top of Ashley. We usually want to save the counter blast for other costs. Being used is the soul blast two to search out a grade two or less and call it. So now we're going to move on to our grade two normal units, starting off with the money card itself. Jewel Knight Sword Me. Sword Me's are just really hard to find for like a fair price just because of the fact that it's an ancient promo. For counter blasting a card with Jewel Knight in its name in your damage zone, you can search your deck for any grade one or less Jewel Knight and call it anywhere you want. It's just this good considering the fact that you want to be calling Jewel Knights, you want to be calling on top of Jewel Knights. Filling up your board is just so helpful with this deck, so the four Sword Me's come in clutch. It's just a super consistent card even though the cost is super simple. Going on to the next grade two, we're running four copies of Sybil. Sybil is pretty much my go-to ride target just because its skill works when a unit's placed on top of it, so it includes your Vanguard. When something's placed on it, you look at top three, search for a grade two or less Jewel Knight, and you can call it, put the rest go to the bottom of your deck. It also has another skill that when it attacks, you can put a grade two or less um, card from your hand and put into your soul to draw a card. So this also helps you fill soul when you swing. So if you need to fill up your soul for Solomon's skill, you just swing, shove something in, draw a card. It's a good uh, good filter card. Next up, four copies of Lily. Lily is like our, our beat stick um, Jewel Knight, but it also helps you recycle your drop zone. When it attacks, two normal units from drop go to bottom and you soul charge one, it gets 5k. The second skill is when a unit's placed on top of Lily, the unit placed gets 10k. So if you have one force marker, you put Lily on the other side, and when you call something, the thing on call on top of Lily gets 10k, so it's like getting another force marker. This just helps make your numbers way bigger. So that's it for our grade twos. Now we're jumping into grade ones, four copies of units, so Jewel Knights makes sense. Eunice is just such a great card because it just helps you gain soul and have cards in hand for Solomon's skill. So I love Eunice in general, and it's searchable with Sword Me. Uh, at the end of the battle that it boosted, uh, you put a normal unit from drop to bottom, soul charge one, bounce back to your hand. The other skill is when a unit's placed on top of it, you can either draw, there's nothing in the same column on your opponent's side, but if there is something on your opponent's uh, rear guard circle in the same column as this, you retire it. It works great when you start, when you write it, because usually your opponent doesn't have anything in the same column. But if they do, like a forerunner, you can snipe it uh, or you can draw a card. So it's just overall really good skill with that as well. Next up, we're on four copies of Morbidus, which is similar to Eunice, because it lets you draw when something's placed on top of it in the same circle. So it's a great right target. Second skill is you counter blast one, put a normal unit from drop to bottom, soul charge one, Choose a Jewel Knight, it gets 5k. This helps you if you just need you need to figure out how to get soul, but you just need to pay a simple counter blast, you can do that. Give something a little bit of power. It has Jewel Knight in its name, that's like the biggest thing about it. 
I am running four copies of Sicilis, and I know it's not a Jewel Knight. I know people really want to run four copies of the other Grade 1 Jewel Knight, Christine, or they want to run like three copies of it. I just know that since we're going to be getting the new Jewel Knight in the next set, Sicilis is basically going to be going away, but Sicilis is still pretty helpful. So I feel like even then I would still maybe keep it at one just because, you know, the top five look for a Grade 3 is not bad. So it's still a helpful card even though it's not a Jewel Knight. Lastly, for grade ones, one copy of the Christine. I'm only running the one copy because it doesn't have the 10K shield. Cost is pretty heavy and I feel like I only use it maybe once during the entire game. And you have plenty of ways to recycle cards from drop back into the deck. So if I see it early and ends up in drop, I can just shove it back into my deck and search it out again. So it's not a big deal. What it does is when it's placed, if you have three or more other rear guards, with Jewel Knight, it's in its name. Counterblast, reveal a grade three. Search your deck for a grade three and call it to rear. And at the end of the turn, you bounce that grade three, discard a card. So your usual search target is gonna be Ashley, just because it's a grade three with a rear guard skill and it lets you call out more things. So you call it out. This lets you call out another thing. You swing with Ashley. Ashley calls out another thing. There's a pretty good combo going on with this, especially if you're able to call during the battle phase. You can call it a Christine and this lets you get another extender. So now we're going to move on to our triggers, starting off with our over trigger, which is our, our Martinoa. The additional effect gives your rear guards drive checks. And since we are running grade threes that have rear guard skill, there is a chance that we'll have grade three rear guards, meaning that they will have twin drive. Heavy rear guards do more drive checks. So yeah, over triggers are busted. So now we're going into our grade three triggers. Innocent Ray Dragons, which is our heal guardians. Same as all the other ones when it's placed on the guard. If you have not ridden to grade three, you can either give your van 10K for the turn, reduce the crit of your opponent's attacking unit, negative two till the end of battle. And then when it's placed on rear from hand, if you don't have any damage, you can put the top card of your deck in your damage zone so you can have counter blast to work with. Biggest thing is that it's a grade three and it's a heal, meaning it's searchable, it helps you pay cost for uh, G guardians. We're running our PGs. So I'm running four flash shield assault. Uh, I know some people are just uh, dropping down to three salt and then running the flashing Jewel Knight PG for their trigger lineups just so they have more Jewel Knight cards, which is a good idea. My only thing is that I feel like for the most part, the deck is pretty consistent with the drop PGs. Drop PGs are just overall really, really good cards in general, just because you damage them, it's a draw, you drive check them, you get a PG in your hand. So I just really like the fact that drop PGs lets you run other great ones and leave, leave you space in your lineup. For me, I like my, uh, my assaults. Crits, so I'm running four copies, a Sun Flare Draco Kid. This is because a lot of times I catch myself needing Jewel Knights in my hand, and instead of discarding the Ashley or the Salome, I'll just discard the crit, just because getting into stride for Crystal Luster is really important for the kill turn, and keeping Jewel Knights in the hand is very helpful. So, stride crit over the uh, crit that fills your soul, surprisingly, considering the fact how much this deck likes to soul charge. And then lastly, I'm running three of the Jewel Knight crit. Having extra Jewel Knights in the deck does help a lot. I feel like in terms of just my triggers, I wanted to maximize the Jewel Knight triggers that I could, that I felt like would make an impact to the game. And because this one has a skill, might as well run it. This one does, it's a 5K crit, a 10K shield. When you place it at the end of your turn, if you have three or more other Jewel Knight rear guards and you have a Jewel Knight Vanguard, you draw a card, put this back in the deck, shuffle. Since Salome wants you to call Jewel Knights, you can just call this from hand. And at the end of the turn, you're gonna draw and put it back in your deck anyways. So it's a good recycle card. And it has Jewel Knight in its name. So it's helpful for the sword me costs. So that's it for the main deck. Now we're gonna go into the fun stuff, which is the G zone. I am running four full on copies of Crystal Luster Dragon. You do not need to do this. I think you probably can get away with just the two. Three copies I think is, is more than enough. The fourth is just overkill. So what it does before I put these away is uh, you flip something face up and you clone your Vanguard's heart skill. So you copy Salome's skill, do the restand and everything, and then continuing on that, continuous is GB3. If you have three or more grade two or greater units, your opponent has to call three at a time when they're calling from their hand. So anytime they guard from hand, they have to call exactly three cards. And because you're attacking one, two, three, call two things, four, five, six, maybe you have Ashley, seven, sets seven, six to seven attacks 
that they have to guard with three at a time. That, that's just gonna kill their hand and or win you the game alone. That's why the Crystal Luster turn is just like the killer for Crystal Luster, just to make sure they're dead. Go into the new card, which is uh, Eol Eolo Eolias. Divine Knight of Triumph Elogias. So Elogias skill is when it attacks, you kind of bust one, turn anything, and you do some face up. Uh, you choose the same number of rear guards you have, and you draw that many cards. Then you call the same number of cards. So if you have three rear guards, you draw three, then call three. After you finish calling, if you have a total of five rear guards, you can acquire an imaginary gift force. Because you have, in order to fill the board, you have to have at least three, you are gonna lose a unit. But because almost every single Jewel Knight has an ability that says when it's placed, something's placed on top of it, you get an effect, you don't really miss out on anything. Especially since the great ones are like, oh, something's placed on top, draw a card. It's nice to have a way where you can Make a quick, easy board. Maybe you call a sword me, sword me gets you a one, and then you have a two. Kind of blast one, or not even kind of blast, yeah, kind of blast one, flip, draw three, call three. You filled your board, you have a good amount of hand, and you know, you get a force marker. So you get two force markers during that turn. So, and you swing and you have a board. So it's a good board filling card. That's why I do like it if I don't really have a way to set up for the Crystal Luster turn. So I do like to have it at least at two, just depending on the matchup. But usually I go on this to this maybe once and then I'll use it as flip fodder the other time. Before I get into that Sabrides I revealed earlier, two copies of Twin Sword. So Twin Sword is also a finisher if I just feel like my opponent's at five and I just need to attack like five times and I don't want to copy Salome skill or maybe I don't have enough soul. I can just go into Twin Sword as my killer. When it swings, when it's boosted, you search your deck for two grade twos, call them, and then it has a passive skill of any unit that's placed from the deck gets an extra 5k for every two cards face up in your G-Zone, or for each card face up in your G-Zone, apologize. Sword me immediately makes whatever you call super buffed. Sybil makes whatever you call super buffed. Twin sword skill alone when it swings calls out more things, those get buffed. It's still a really good uh, finisher card as well. Now we'll show off that Sabriz I uh, pulled out earlier. So my opponent is like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna side a grade, stay at grade two, I'm not gonna ride a grade three. You could do the Salome turn or you can go into Sabriz. I like having the option. Usually this is just flip fodder just because all the Royal Paladin stuff lets you flip anything. So mostly flip fodder, but you can also use it to counter blast two. Your opponent didn't ride and they're on grade two. You just stride it for counter blast two discard. It's a vanilla, but it lets you stride and it lets you have something face up in your G zone so that, you know, start using those GB ones from mass goal and start getting into the GB three of crystal luster. So it still helps. Um, next one copy Agnos, just because similar to Elogius, calling things on top of each other benefits with jewel knights. So if I have six cards in hand and I go into Agnos, call my entire hand, have to call something on top of something else, I still can benefit off that. It lets me draw three cards. And for the rest of the game, if this is face up in the G zone, I don't have to uh, pay cost for stride, which is really helpful. I like to have this in the deck also as an option, not worry about strike costs. Helpful. Now we're getting to the G units, or the G guardians, I mean. The new one, the one that turns your grade twos in the PGs. So what this does is when it's placed on guard circle, you pick a uh, rear guard grade two, it gets 10k shield till the end of turn. And when it intercepts, you can counter blast soul blast and it becomes a PG. It, it's, it's nice. My only thing is I wish it would give maybe the grade twos like resist or something just so that they can stay on the board. But I do like to have it as an option and there's a pretty large amount of space for G guardians in the Royal Paladin G zone. We'll work with what we got. <clears throat> Next up, which is arguably the best G Guardian that Royal Paladin has, which is kind of sad, uh, is Maskell. Maskell is GB1, flip a G Guardian face up. If you have a front row rear guard, 10K shield. That's it, good as Mas Maskell gets. Next up, one copy of Rakton, just because uh, we have a lot of space. Rakton, what it does is when it's placed on uh, the guard circle, you discard a card first and then you draw a card. So it's just kind of like a, a hand filter. So if you know, like, ah, oh, like I have a card in my hand that's not helpful right now, drop, draw, there you go. And then next is a really, really good G Guardian, which is Dismal. Dismal's ability is when it's placed on the guard circle, you pick a rear guard and it gets resist and cannot be attacked. So it's just kind of like pretty much safe, but this is just kind of help you guarantee that a specific rear guard 
doesn't get attacked, or that your opponent doesn't just swing at your rear guards to damage deny you. So that's one thing you can do. You can go, ah, dismal. Now you, if you want to attack, you have to attack my Vanguard. That's pretty much it for the deck. It's really, this deck is just really, really wacky in practice, just because of the whole fact that this card exists and it can copy Salome's skill and it can even copy Ashley's skill. I've been having a lot of fun with this deck. My one gripe with it is that because of the fact that Crystal Lusters are so hard to find and because the set's out of print, they're just really expensive. But she wrote, if, if you're listening, please reprint all of like the premium collection 2019 and 2020 stuff because we want to try and get more players to be playing premium without them having to spend like three to four hundred dollars to build the deck. Yep, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. You guys will hopefully be seeing games of this in the near future. That's pretty much it. I'm Richard and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.